heading towards Tessiah and Arthur. And literally, it's not like him just defending it and like someone's coming to the rescue. The next panel, we literally see them get evaporated. Like, I'm not, I'm not capping, guys. Yo. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Savvy. And today, we'll be breaking down the latest chapter of the Begin After Then, which is chapter 99. Yo, this chapter was phenomenal. I had a great time reading it. If you guys haven't read the latest chapter yet, please pause this video, read it, come back, unless you don't care about being spoiled, because we're going to be breaking down this whole chapter from beginning to end. And if you guys haven't seen my personal reaction to the chapter, it is posted on YouTube, link in the description below, or you can just go to the channel and check it out yourself. And man, this chapter was great. I had a great time reading it. Oh my God, there's a lot we're gonna break down. And before we get started, if you guys enjoy these kind of videos, me breaking down the chapters from each and every small point and the biggest points, please let me know in the comment section below and smashing that like button. It'll mean the world and it takes less than a second and it helps the channel grow and brings more exposure to the series I cover and myself so it'll be killing two birds with one stone and without all out the way remember smash the notification bell so you can always stay plugged with each and every upload and now let's get started with the breakdown <laughs> Alrighty, with chapter 99, honestly, from this, the start of this chapter to the end, it all came together. And what I mean by that is the title. The title is, This Is Gonna Hurt. And personally, I figured that will be, you know, probably Lucas getting bodied or Tessai getting pushed back, you know, on the brink and she, you know, she, she has to do something. I figured it might be something like that. We never figured it'll be, you know, our boy Arthur. And we'll get into that later throughout the video. But yo, it's cool that they did that there because I doubt anyone would have figured that out unless you're a light novel reader. But anyway, so we basically start off with the professor being pretty impressed with Lucas saying that what she's seeing now is a lot more than what she has heard about this kid. And on surface level, even though we all hate Lucas, we know that he is he's a pretty, you know, competent mage. That we we can't hate that. Even if like he was fed potions since he was a baby, he's still doing crazy stuff. And I mean, he didn't choose that route. His family did that to him. So, I mean, we can't like really hate the power that he has now and from the outside perspective you know professors and people looking at it they could be in awe because we don't we know the dark side of lucas everyone else probably will just think he's like an annoying brat you know at most but we're readers so we know his true side but, but we always got to put things in the right perspective so you know she's impressed about it basically saying that the inferno's cage that he's using is a top tier magic spell and is really tough and yet he's so proficient with the spell at such a young age so that leads me to the point where he is pretty capable even though he's a scrub he, he he could hold his own but you know he just he lacks certain traits and even on top of that this was the key point that i thought it was crazy she literally says his minor reserve seemed to almost rival that of a silver core mage when i read that i'm like bro the only way that's possible if it's because of the potions. So all the potions he was fed, you know, that was basically boosting him. I feel like that was mainly for his minor reserves. And it was more so like he needed to use and train his attribute, which is fire, to be, you know, to use it to his full potential. So that could probably give Lucas more credit than we probably not given him. Because at the end of the day, I figured it might have been... You know, all these potions are just helping him use all these crazy spells, this and that. But maybe, no, the potions are just helping his mana reserves to almost rival a silver core mage. So he'll be able to have the chance to learn all these crazy high diff spells from such a young age. So, so it's like two sides of the same coin. Yes, he's basically boosting to be able to use all these spells because of his vast mana reserves. But at the same time, he needs to be proficient and he's, he needs to be able to actually use it. You could have all of the mana reserves in the world but if you if you have no talent you can't really use or benefit all the mana you have so you really got to think about that lucas is pretty good it, it hurts me to say but he's he, he's a, he's a decent mage decent mage don't know how long that's gonna last but yo we shall see and taking this all in the professor is basically saying like yo there might not be room for me or us talking to her mana beast in the future if the kids are all like this and she's referring to lucas and then at the same time she pivots to our boy Art. It was awesome because she was like, especially kids like him. And then we see Art, like, yo, we, there's levels to this. We see like, yo, Lucas is some crazy. He's, he's a, he's a okay mage, borderline, I wouldn't say genius. 
I wouldn't say a genius. I, I'm not going to call him a genius. He's a talented mage. He's, you know, ahead of his class, a few classes, because he's still really, really young. But there's levels, because our boy Arthur, he, yo, that dude's a genius. He's a prodigy. He's the MC, bro. And I'm loving it. And this chapter is really great because, honestly, there's so much they jam-packed in this chapter. And I really like seeing the progression of Art taking, you know, the side of where he's not proficient in win and seeing how far he's coming with it in such a short amount of time. Like, the, even the professor, like, she's, like, going through this and dissecting it along with us. And we actually find out what Art is doing. And we'll get into that soon. Basically, Art's, like, dodging all the fire beams, you know, from Lucas. And we see that some the fire is getting on him, but it doesn't look like he's getting burned. And it's pretty crazy. And then the teacher is basically saying that she is intrigued to see what this kid is all about. Knowing that, you know, he beat a veteran professor, even if it's just. Because she was basically saying, like, yo, like... Just was careless, yo, but still, he's a professor. He, he needed to be strong enough for, to reach that level, that title. So, I mean, it was pretty impressive feat for Art to, you know, take him out in the professor's eye. So, she's really, really intrigued. And then she notices, at the same time, the pressure that she felt prior to this chapter, that aura. I call it King Saki, you know, Conqueror Saki. Our boy's a king. Well, he was a king in his past life, but, like, that pressure that he exudes that makes even, like, top-tier, like, professors... Veron, good sky, like shrivel. Like they get pretty scared. And also I don't think that they're actually scared for their life when they feel this pressure. They're just more interested and curious about how this little kid, how and what kind of life did he live to, for him to exude this amount of pressure. And yo, honestly, he was a king of this past life and we don't, they don't know that. So it's obviously really cool to see that. Cause I feel like it's just a, it's different from like arts of power compared to him himself like his resolve his foresight about a lot of things it's that and his power because his power he has latent he has a lot of potential he didn't reach it yet he's getting there but he didn't reach it but like he always had this energy with him since day one since he was a little baby he always had this and it's crazy that everyone's noticing that and ah it's just always a good moment when i see that in the series because they're like so confused like what kind of life did he live and they have no idea oh my god and then Art, you know, he's basically coming, he's, he's composing himself. We've seen him breathe in and out, and we notice it's the wind. And we don't know, as readers and the professor at this moment, like, what is he actually doing? And then we see there's literally an aura of wind around our boy Art. It's pretty, pretty impressive. I thought it was just, you know, like, calming himself, you know, trying to push away the flames. But we don't know yet until we actually find out that the fire is dodging him and hitting him. But it's not burning him. Like, one, like, moves... Like, Art dodges one, goes right next to his face, but he doesn't get any burn or anything. And then one hits him on the leg. And then we see his pants and his, his clothing is getting burned, but he's not getting burned, really. And after the fire beam hit, you know, Art's leg, the teacher's basically saying, like, yo, if he keeps this up, or if Lucas keeps this up and Art's not going to, like, defend himself, he's going to get burned. And then, like, right after she says like i think his uniform is going to get burned she pauses and she looks closely and then she gets hell excited she's like yo yo she's basically telling her mana beast like yo let's go further down we got to see this and she's intrigued which made me believe like art's doing something else that is that we're not noticing right now and it's pretty impressive because we literally find out that art is using his magic to defend himself from the flames to take away the oxygen so when the flames touch him he's not really getting burned so it's like a shield within arts you know surroundings it's not like his surroundings it's more so like an outer layer of armor because it's not like a force field it's like on his body per se so it's interesting because we get a breakdown as well too to see how how impressive this feat is for art because at surface level yeah it looks pretty easy but knowing that art's not proficient in this you know win attribute and how difficult it is for people that is proficient it opens your eyes and we're going to be diving deep in that right now so basically the professor breaks down saying, unlike wind magic, trying to manipulate the air itself involves much more insight and higher levels of concentration and chanting in order to properly spell cast. So art didn't chant anything, mind you guys. Art didn't say anything whatsoever. Take that note. <laughs> and she keeps on going. It's why there aren't mages capable of just sucking the air out of the opponent's lungs because it's really difficult, right? It will take hours of concentration to manipulate the air directly inside a moving living target. Another note, literally, Art's a moving target and literally these flyers, everything's moving. Or Lucas is moving and he's still doing this. 
That is why mages either use their own body as a source or a pre-designated immovable location. So basically from what they just said, Art is doing the first part of that, I believe, in my own opinion. When it says either using their own body as a source, which he is, Art, Art is the body that he's using the wind magic to like, you know, negate the oxygen so the fire won't hurt him compared to a pre-designated unmovable location he's not doing that because everything's moving art's the one that's literally using his body yes he's moving but at the same time th that's just a crazy feat in its own but he's i feel like he's doing the first part and then the teacher also says he's keeping his era of effect as close to his body as possible and then she says but then to be able to do this in the middle of a fight and she shivers. She she starts geeking out, guys. Art is reaching levels, and we don't know how long, honestly. This so we know that art hasn't been in Cyrus Academy that long at all, really. Honestly, this is only a few days. So he hasn't been training that much in his win attribute because he just recently sealed it off since he, you know, entered Cyrus Academy. And he's able to do such a feat like this without any chanting. Guys, we all say Art is top tier, but his potential is through the roof. How fast he can just get things. And it's really, really impressive. And I, I like how the professor is noticing that too. And mind you, that has nothing to do with his beast world or anything, guys. This is his own powers. So I hope people don't get it twisted. Like, this is Art's powers. And he's not going to help from, like, Sylvie or anything. Like, he's being capable of doing this from all his training that he put in. So it, it was just awesome. And then after she finished freaking out about, you know, geeking over Arthur, we find out that Arthur is manipulating a thin air around his body to form a vacuum to disperse the fire before it hits him. So he's basically, you know, eliminating the oxygen, which, which we foresaw. Well, at least I did from, you know, last chapter. That's what he was going to do, but not how he's doing it when he's just using his own body, not like a force field or anything. So that was really, really crazy. And then Art even talks about how it was a lot easier to do it in his head, which is pretty interesting to see. And we know that Art, you know, he gets a little cocky. He probably didn't know it was going to be that hard. And he's basically trying to get through the bear of Lucas right now. And Lucas is like freaking out, wondering like, why is his spells not working? And then we notice that Lucas cannot see Art. Like, our, <laughs> our boy is way too strong. Like, Lucas came and see the, the aura or the energy or the wind attribute around Art, which makes sense because like, if it's actual wind, like it's not like fire or water where you could see it. So it might be that coming into play or Lucas just... He's not really thinking or like trying to understand like what's really going on. So he's like freaking out. And then he uses a really, really strong spell. It looks like we don't know if this is like his trump card. But I'm assuming it is because he's basically saying like, I'm going to end it now. I don't care. Like I'm going to end this. And he says, rise my protector. And he conjures a flame guardian, which is looking really, really drippy guys. Yo, I hate such a chump is using this ability because it looks so dope. And then right after that, we see Arthur smiling. He's smiling guys. And the fire guardian's charging right after Arthur. And literally, he's basically saying, like, yo, so Lucas has finally reached his limit. And Art's ready to go. He's ready to freaking end this dude. And then out of nowhere, boom, he gets a shock on his body. He's, like, freaking out, like, yo, what, what, what's going on? Where is this pressure coming from? And then guess what we find out? Mama is in danger. That's what happened. So we reached out to Art, you know, psychologically and said, yo, mom's in danger. And then we don't know what happened at this moment. But we could see freaking growler using a command mayo wave uh, to saya and art's like freaking out he doesn't know what's going on like yo like why is she not protecting herself and while you know he's thinking about this art, like lucas is still trying to attack him and then he's distracted and then you know art you know dodges really quick he's not gonna get bodied by some chump named lucas let's get it popping let's, we know the vibe so anyway he's so freaking out he's worried about tess he needs to get out of this situation and then he does you know his own trump card Static Void, guys. He brings out Static Void, dude. It was oh man, I love see. I love seeing him tap in to his um Dragon Will. It's awesome. It's awesome because I well personally, it reminds me of Sylvia every time he uses it. How when he gets like those markings around his body, and it just gives me a warm feeling. Like it's, it's like Sylvia is such an awesome character, even though we got such little information about her. It's just crazy. It's just crazy seeing that. And I, I just really like how Art uses the powers. And it shows it's like he has so much potential. Because he's still like out of breath and he can't even use them that long. And it shows how crazy Sylvia's powers is. Like, oh my god. It's, it's fascinating to actually think about. 
And we see our boy, the drippiest panel, reaching static void, guys. Oh my god. Such such a beautiful panel. Jesus. And you know, he's he's instantly when he hits static void, he's already trembling. He's like freaking out. And he's not freaking out per se, but he's trembling. He's basically saying that he needs to get a hold of himself and get Tessiah out of this situation. So at the, at the same time, he's basically trying to get to Tessiah. And then he's just still wondering, like, why is she not protecting herself? Like, what's going on? We don't really know the, the case or the reason why, you know, Tessiah is not doing anything. But personally, I feel as, you know, it's the, it's the Beast Will. She used too much of his, her power or something, and then she couldn't control it. And then it, there's a backlash, and that's why she's down and out. Or, you know, um, Tessiah was pushing Growler to a breaking point, and then he accessed his Beast Will, and Tessiah was trying to do something, and it was, like, too much power that she couldn't use at the moment and basically art's trying to like you know get to to science as fast as possible and then she noticed the teacher the professor is worried too heading to test but i feel like he's thinking his head like yo i don't think the teacher's gonna make it personally for me because if he noticed the teacher going there then he would kind of feel like okay the teacher has this but like at the same time he's using static void to try to you know get there fast enough so i don't think he, she's able to reach to sign in time the teacher alone and we see the command may wave literally heading towards Tess and out of nowhere Art's freaking out because he sees Growler going ham he sees Curtis like not stopping the spell and it looks like I'm not too sure yeah he just notices saying Curtis is releasing his beast wall question mark but we also don't see that maybe Curtis doesn't know that Tess is not defending herself because if that was the case maybe we could like see him like you know try to stop the power that he's you know, exuding out or maybe he's just, he, he just can't reel it back in Either way, it's it's barbecue chicken for Tess if Art doesn't do something. And then, what do you know? Arthur comes in out of nowhere, and he basically says he's running out of mana after he's using that wind barrier spell. And it's crazy because he protects Tess, saying, like, I'm going to protect you. And the spell's still coming head on, and Art literally says, I don't have enough mana to block this. So, so what does he do? He literally grabs Sasaya, holds her, and tells her, and says, this is going to hurt. And in the background, we see a we see a big energy beam heading towards Tessiah and Arthur. And literally, it's not like him just defending it and like someone's coming to the rescue. The next panel, we literally see them get evaporated. Like I'm not I'm not capping, guys. Yo, they're getting it collided. It collided. It hit them. So if next chapter, if it's like oh they're safe where they made out in time, that's cap because literally this last panel, they literally look like they're getting evaporated. And that's just crazy to say, but. That's what happened. And that was the chapter, guys. That was literally the breakdown of the whole chapter. Honestly, this was a great chapter. I had a great time reading this. There's so many things I want to see after this, and it just leads me to want to read the light novel even more. Get caught up at least till this point, because I've been slacking a little bit. So I, I really got to do that and do my reactions of that. But um, anyway, this was great because I really want to see what caused Tessiah to actually, you know, not, you know, put a bear around herself because it looked like she was like out we didn't see her face or anything it looked like she was just laying there which is crazy so it makes me think like um that happened literally right in the between um curtis you know firing that attack and then it collided into her because i don't think curtis would do that if tesai is already knocked out so i feel like tesai was trying to do something and then boom just something happened and i really think it's the beast will mess with her or is she tapping into Tapping into more power than she should she could control because the beast will she's not really compatible with it and you know it backfired so only time will tell and we'll find out next week so if you guys like this breakdown and you guys want to see more please let me know by smashing that like button again all these predictions and theories I have these are my own opinion you guys can form your own and let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about what will happen next week in chapter 100 so yo I hope you guys all enjoy this um, breakdown. And I hope you guys all have a good day or night wherever you guys are from. And remember, catch me on Patreon if you guys want to see more reactions of other series like Solo Leveling. But like always, don't stop leveling up. Savvy Nut, signing out.